But it has not to only be PetCube uh, that, that creates this new industry in the world and creates globally successful product out of Ukraine. I believe we need to have hundreds of companies like that. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how we are going to build the next 100 globally disruptive companies out of Ukraine. So this is, this is a blueprint how I see it. And first, why would you ever start a global enterprise, global, global business? It's so risky, right? We were talking so much about Ukraine today. Well, a couple reasons. First, it's incredibly important for um, the national defense, right? There are people who are fighting on the border, who are protecting Ukraine. But people who have their skills in entrepreneurship, technology, finance, they have their own duty to be on economic front. So building the company that makes world care more about Ukraine is actually a great thing you can do for Ukrainian defense. The next thing, we gotta build a new role model for society. Let's, let's, let's call it what it is. Most people in Ukraine are still inspired by corrupt politicians corrupt lawmakers. Those are the role models. People see them uh, riding fancy cars and they think, okay, that's, that's how success looks like. No, that's not how it looks like. And we need a new role model of entrepreneurs who didn't steal, who didn't privatize a factory, who built some value for the world, and that's how they got successful, that's how they found meaning in life, that's how they got their respect. That's how they got their wealth. The more entrepreneurs like that are around, the more people will be able to recognize that. Finally, of course, entrepreneurship is, is an amazing fuel for the economy. That's, that's value creation at its best. And that's innovation at, it, at its best. So what I firmly believe in is that Ukraine today is one of the world's best places to start a technology company. And I'll prove you why. It's not just brava bravado. It's, it, it is a fact. That's what I believe. First, we are, well, one of, a few company, uh, well, one of the few countries in the world that can build an airplane. Why? Because airplane demands wide expertise in a big range of areas. So Ukraine has really wi wide field of specialists, right? Not that many countries have such a wide field of specialists. We should leverage that. The second, we have really low labor costs. In fact, Ukraine has probably one of the cheapest in the world costs of educated labor, uh, if not that cheapest, combined with this wide range of specialists. And the third one, the third one is really important. Ukraine now has a generation of people who really want to prove themselves. These are, were people that were born after Ukraine got independence. Uh, the nation that didn't have its sovereignty for over 300 years, now all of that energy that was accumulated tries to get out. We saw three revolutions in 30 years, and that is a manifestation of that energy that Ukrainians have. If you combine these three things, the wide range of specialists, the low cost of labor on the world standards, and the passion. This is a unique place in the world. And these are exactly the ingredients you need to build a successful, globally successful, innovative business, right? So which company should we build? First, I firmly believe that companies should be mega projects. You should not aim something small. It should be ambitious. Why? Because the competition is not for capital. There is plenty of capital in the world if you have globally competitive ideas. The competition is for the best talent. And the best talent goes where the ambition is. The best talent wants to work on projects that they want to see in the world. And these are the projects you need to start in Ukraine. And these are the projects you need to fund in Ukraine. Second, use those strategic advantages that I just mentioned. If you start a mega project, for example, a new automobile company out of Ukraine or the new aerospace enterprise that involves thousands of highly educated Ukrainians, that's how you leverage that advantage. Because for building one factory of, well, 
for the money you can use to build one factory in Silicon Valley, you can build five, maybe ten factories in Ukraine and try competing with us when we are moving at that pace. The third is obviously need to target global markets, including because global markets means global level of quality um, and it also means global revenues. Ukraine is not big enough. We're not China. We're not the US. So what are the examples of companies that could be built like that? Heavy industries, everything that deals with rocketry, um, aerospace, um, trains, uh, cars, anything like that. Manufacturing, manufacturing is getting reinvented. The way plants and factories are working will be changed completely over the next 50 years. Current designs for factories were designed literally 100 years ago. This is all getting robotized. This is all get, getting full of sensors and reimagined um, using the learnings people got with modern software. Agriculture technology, not just agriculture, but agriculture technology has an opportunity to increase yields by, by the factor of 10. This is a huge opportunity, but we cannot sit there on our beautiful, super fertile land and wait until someone else comes here with their technology and creates all the value for that. Entertainment. I believe creativity is so much underappreciated in Ukraine. We can build globally competitive creative projects, and I think those will be created over the next 10 years. Furniture, textile, pharma, there are so many industries that are waiting to be disrupted. All of them will be changed a lot gl globally, around the world, because software is the world. Software is the world. We can see that very vividly on example of so many companies around the world, so many industries, and that will happen to all of these industries. Finally, learning and education. It is ridiculous how underlooked this area is. We invest so much in machine learning, yet human learning gets so little attention. There is an opportunity to disrupt the way people learn globally, and there is nothing that stops us in Ukraine from, from building those kind of projects. So it wouldn't be fair if I didn't talk about barriers. There are definitely barriers. There are. I see the three, three big barriers. First is geopolitical risks. But let's be real. Um, America has geopolitical risks with uh, this guy in North Korea, right? The whole world has those risks. Um, Israel has many geopolitical risks, OK? Um, all the world has geopolitical risks with earthquakes, tornadoes, uh, tsunamis, and so on. So I mean, the world has learned how to deal with that. So, Let's be realists. It's not that bad as sometimes people paint it. Corruption risks, internal risks. Yeah, you can, you can obviously run away and hide and cry and say, oh my gosh, Ukraine is so corrupt, I cannot do anything, right? But that's a position of a loser. The position of someone who wants to create something is figure out how you can deal with that. And you can deal with that. You can deal with that bringing some Western investors, bring maybe some Ukrainian investors on board, uh, figuring out how to navigate that field while obviously helping and emphasizing how important it is to fight corruption in this country. Finally, I think one of the biggest risks is management. That is uh, often underappreciated. Unfortunately, and I tend to blame communism, um, we do not have a lot of good managers in this country because the market economy is still very young in this country. So what do we do? Well. I think we should invite managers from those places that, that have great managers, and that's what we're doing at TechCube. So I want to quote my favorite Ukrainian engineer and constructor, Sergei Korolev, who supposedly said that one who wants to work looks for opportunities. The one who doesn't looks for reasons. Let's look for opportunities. Finally, I believe that Ukraine will create a hundred globally successful companies that will be worth over $1 billion over the next 15 years. There is no way to stop it, in fact. So you better join it, OK? And here's how you can join it. Government. I think, actually, your main function might not be in 
lawmaking or regulation or creating a great platform, all of that is important. But the one thing you overlook is how important the leadership is. I'm not seeing any leadership from the government in terms of, hey, Ukrainian creative class, all the passionate people, please go and create big companies. We will try to support you with whatever we can, whatever we can figure out. So government, please have some leadership and give some inspiration and give some signs to those people that this is one of the priorities. Second, investors. Investors, they're right here in Ukraine now. Start creating vehicles that will be capable of investing in these early stage companies. Don't just focus on those large chunk chunks in steel and agriculture and whatever we have in Ukraine. Foreign investors. Uh, I do recommend you to invest now while it is still not that expensive. It will be more expensive next year, next year, next year. Finally, media. Please, please show that the glass is half full and have some optimism in your reporting. Don't just report all the trash that is happening. So with that said, I'll, give you with, I'll leave you with this one, one last message. Um, you should invest in Ukraine now. Thank you. Thank you, Yaroslav. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to introduce Oleg Naumenko, uh, who is uh, already a serial entrepreneur and will tell about uh, his story to date. Uh,